Hello, everyone, and welcome to another weekly coaching workshop with GoMobi.Work, where every week we bring you a topic in employee development, performance management, or leadership that you can use to help your team do its best work. My name is Wade Bruffy. I'm the co-founder and CEO of GoMobi.Work. And today I'm going to be talking with you about something that is absolutely fundamental to our philosophy and to the success of our, com our customers, and that is coaching as a skill. This is something that we truly believe that anybody can learn, and it's one of the most exciting things about the work that we do with organizations, and we want to just get this information out there. So that's why we're, we have the whole series of these webinars, but this one we're going to be really drilling into the thing that started it all, and that's coaching. And we know that a lot of business leaders aren't used to always hearing about coaching as something that they could be doing or something that they might already be doing and just not knowing it. Um, so the words are thrown around like employee development, which we love, um, or even performance management, which is maybe more strictly related to um, just making sure things are in line, not so worried about maybe things getting a little bit better. But these are all in our minds, forms of coaching. And so whether we're doing them on purpose or whether we're doing them without thinking about it right now, there's so much that we can learn about what coaching is and what it means to be a great coach and what kind of outcomes that a great coach is able to create. And one of the things that uh, we always come back to here at GoMobi.Work is that great teams do teamwork on purpose. They don't do it by accident. And maybe when you're starting off and you're a small company, things are a little easier. You know, when you have 10 people in a room or 10 people just working in a team, everybody's super close. You can kind of have that relationship where maybe you just say something or, you know, think something's not going quite as well. And everybody's really trying to work on it together. But as your company gets bigger, your organization gets bigger, not all company, not, we're not only talking about companies here, any kind of team or group, but as, as the organization starts to grow, a challenge that often happens is that these teamwork methods that, that maybe were assumed or thought that they would just go on working as they, they, they have been, they break down. And so coaching is about bringing a practice to the organization to help things move along more smoothly and to help people do great work and to help people move the process along um, in a really powerful and intentional way. And so really um, the thing that we're all about, if you've been following us for any amount of time or you're watching this video um, as and you've seen all the other ones, you know that this is something that we really believe that certain people in the organization, people who are in management, part of the function of leadership is to help other people grow. It's really the fundamental part of leadership. It's what, you know, some people might call servant leadership. Uh, we truly believe that it is one of the greatest responsibilities and one of the greatest opportunities for a manager or leader to promote the growth of the people that they are working with and that they are supporting really at the end of the day. So we're going to talk about that today, and I'm very excited to share this with you. So I'm going to set up my uh, screen here so you can see some materials that we put together for you. You know, hopefully this works. And I know that on the recording, this is going to make my face really small. So sorry if you are getting shrunk down. But um, here we go. We have our uh intro to coaching and i hope that you can still see this i'm gonna laugh if i um, get to the end and then it's not it's not visible but i am doing both uh presenting and uh sharing today so hope, bear with me as we get this set up so core competencies in coaching um coaching is a skill anybody can learn it uh it is a some maybe maybe some people are more inclined initially to learn it than others but I truly believe that anybody can learn how to do this. Um, anybody can adopt the mindset and the ways of thinking of a coach. And so uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. So first of all, if you're watching this and you're like, all right, I get it. I'm a leader and I think that I know how to support my people, but could you just define coaching for me really quick? Yes, we can absolutely do that. And let me just make sure, of course, now my thing is not letting me go forward. Come on. 
Where are you? There we go. What is coaching? Coaching is a collaborative, discovery-driven, and support-centric influence process that leads to learning, growth, decision-making, performance improvement, and positive change. That was a big mouthful, but this is our definition here at GoMobi.Work. We have developed this over, you know, our team has 30 years of collective experience as coaches, and we have, uh, you know, these are some, we're going to drill into this a little bit more carefully and there's just a handful of things here that we really want to go to but before we dive into the first part here learning growth decision making performance improvement and positive change probably sound hopefully sound like things that you want to drive towards as a leader so let's talk about the first parts though because there's a lot there so coaching is a collaborative discovery driven so what do we mean when we say coaching is collaborative Coaching is a relationship between more than one person. It is a it is a usually a two one to two relationship, but maybe it's one to a, several or one to many in some cases. But the point is that coaching is a relationship. So uh, it's not a uh, it's not like a lecture where somebody is just standing up there and sharing information. Maybe that happens sometimes in a coaching situation, but it isn't a it isn't a pure teaching interaction it isn't a pure teaching relationship it's really uh that uh, an equal relationship we want to make sure that when we're in a coaching situation that both people or any everybody in that situation is on equal footing somebody is in charge of the of the session the coach but that doesn't mean that their voice has more weight in fact as we'll talk about really the I, whole idea with a coaching session and my co-founder Zoltan Sarda, um, you know, he did hit, one of the things that he swears by. And I, I love this is that uh, he says that his life will be complete when, you know, when everybody that he coaches does 98% of the talking. So we really, it isn't about the coach being the one to lecture and teach. It's about the coach and the participant in the session working together. Um, and that's something that we're going to dive into a, a little bit more. So coaching is discovery driven. The object of a coaching session is for the coaching session to drive towards greater understanding, greater uh, ability to act. Coaching is about development. Coaching is about me being like, oh my gosh, I figured something out that's new. And I'm really excited about that. It's something that I can now go out and act on. Coaching is about creating a breakthrough. And so there's nothing more satisfying. And hopefully, if you're watching this video, you've actually had the chance to help somebody have that realization, whether it's small or large, or you know, it doesn't even have to be professional. Maybe, um, maybe you're helping your kid with their math homework and they finally were like, oh, I got it. <laughs> you know, it, we coach all these ways that we don't really know. And um just to recognize that as really powerful. So it's about coaching is about discovery. It's about finding out new things. It's about learning that and then acting on it. So there's a couple more pieces here. And so it's a coaching is a support centric influence process. So what do we mean by these things? Um, coaching is support centric. So this is where a lot of companies kind of get into some, it, it, it's something to figure out. So, um, and there are, uh, you know, we've we've spoken with people who have challenged us a little bit and uh, the thesis and the, what we do with our customers and saying uh, a manager could never be a coach because a manager is also tasked with, uh, you know, if something is going wrong, they also need to be the one maybe even sometimes to let somebody go to fire them. So we disagree with that. And we think that a, a great way to be both a manager and a coach is to have a special time where you are just coaching. And so coaching is not a punitive function and no punitive conversations should happen during coaching time. Coaching time is the time where we are going to sit down and I'm going to just say, I'm here to help you. I wanna help you succeed. I know maybe a few more things than you, but really my job as the coach is to help you bring out the best in you. And it's going to, Maybe I'm going to push you, but I'm never going to punish you. I'm never going to tell you that you're doing something badly. I mean, maybe you're going to, I'm, I'm going to tell you that you could do something better, but I'm not going to say, 
during a coaching session, uh, this isn't working out. Maybe I realize as a coach myself, this isn't working out during the coaching session, but I'm going to wait until after the coaching session and set up another time to figure out where to go from here. And maybe that involves us parting ways, but that conversation happens at a different time. We are see, during coaching session. We are looking to uplift somebody. We're going to solve problems. We're going to work together. We're going to collaborate and we're going to grow. That's what happens during a coaching session is a support oriented function. And it's also an influence related function. So a coach's job, one of our jobs as coaches is to really influence people into changing the way they think or do things. Um, and without the ability to influence somebody else, we are going to really struggle to help somebody make a breakthrough because we need to be able to have enough say and enough, um, maybe pr prompt them well enough that they are like, aha, I get it. And so by being the uh, authority of, I'm here to facilitate a process, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more, is going to give you the the, the, the positioning as a coach in order to really help somebody um, get influenced. And, you know, you're going to become influential through this process. And really, um, there's nothing more influential we find than somebody who is able to help somebody else get what they want. That is always going to make you an influential person. And that is what a coach does. Coach is saying, I am going to help you get what you want. That's our job. We're going to help you achieve more. We're going to help you be happier. We're going to help you find where you're contributing the greatest. And I'm going to be part of that process. And because you are committing to showing up for that person consistently with intention, with skill, you're going to gain influence in that process. And so by doing that influence, you're going to help them grow and you're going to further increase your own level of influence. Because guess what? That person is going to go out and say, boy, I really was helped. You should go talk to them. They're really good at what they do. And maybe your team succeeds even more and you get recognition throughout the organization. It could be a huge, huge value add. So what makes a great coach is something that we always, always start out with when we're working with a customer. Um, we have a lot of first-time managers uh, that have never been coaches before. And that's a beautiful thing. You're, whether or not you have acknowledged your role as a coach, anytime you're managing people, uh, you are in some way acting as the developer of somebody else, which we would say makes you a coach. So what do great coaches do? A great coach, first and foremost, they help other people grow. A great coach doesn't give instructions for what they do. They facilitate a process that helps participants arrive at their own conclusions and realizations. They help participants choose their next course of action and move along a path to success. A great coach sees the best in the participant and the opportunity for a development in every situation, even when the participant themselves cannot. A good coach practices these things. They ask, they ask, they don't tell. They maintain a vision for the future. They help the participant choose their next aligned action and they practice a process. So this is maybe something that sounds familiar to you. If you've had any experience with this, Maybe you can think of a few ways that you're already doing this right now. Um, maybe you're thinking, gee, I actually give people the answer too much. And I probably could be more effective by helping them come to their own realization. We're going to actually talk about that first. So part of what makes a great coach is that they ask, they don't tell. So we at GoMobi.Work, when we work with an organization to help them set up an employee development program, we always rely on an inquiry-based discussion protocol. So we develop a plan for based around the types of questions that we're going to ask when something goes wrong or some we're in a coaching moment. We have a scheduled call with our employee. When we go in to say, what could we be doing better? We start with questions. So inquiry-based is the foundation for what we do. Um, we have another video on it if you want to go check it out or reach out to us. This is something that we set up for everybody that we work with. Um, is an inquiry-based coaching process. And so uh, 
you can tell, you know, I guess we've given you some examples here, which is saying, do you, do you gain more ability by practicing it yourself? Or do you just gain ability by sitting there and watching? Like if you, if you were watching the Olympics on television, does that mean that you get to go to the Olympics? If you're watching the sprint, you watched Usain Bolt do the, do it to be the fastest. Does that mean that you then are able to go do that? If you watched Ulib Kipchoge run a marathon and I think it's sub two hours and 45 minutes, something like that. Does that mean that you get to go do that? No, you have to go practice it. So by spoon feeding, and a lot of leaders get into this problem because they're very competent and they train people to come ask them for the answer. And there are some cultures, like entire countries, where you don't do anything unless you're told to do it. And so that's something that's extremely ineffective. Um, we often refer to the work of Edward D.C. and Richard Ryan, Richard Ryan about self-determination theory. And so one of the things that they talk about in their self-determination theory research is basically um, how to keep people motivated and what drives people. This is what the research is about. And um, one of the things that they talk about is autonomy. And so when you're consistently feeding people the answer, you're taking away their autonomy. You're taking away their ability to figure it out. They're you're training them to give up their autonomy. They're training, you're training them to come to you, the person that has all the answers. That is not effective. They're not going to get better if they're consistently being told what to do. They have to endeavor on that process themselves. And recently we had a customer who came to us and was saying, um, my employees are not proactive and it's driving me insane. Like I, I don't think we're going to survive as a business because people are constantly needing to have their hand held. And this is a really grow a, a, a professional services firm that grew really quickly. And then once they reached a number of employees where the CEO could no longer be involved with people, it completely started to fold. So this is really important. And so coaching is about helping people improve their ability level. It's not about telling them what to do so that they get better. It's about asking them, what would you do? What do you think we should do? And, or maybe what went well last time, what can we apply to this situation now? Uh, or we always like to ask double loop questions, double loop learning questions, which instead of asking um, what's, what's wrong with this, um, maybe asking why did this go wrong? What, what, what kept us from seeing this? Uh, and what could keep us from seeing this again next time? So by prompting that answer, we, we, we always, I think a common mistake of leaders is that they don't, uh, we always think that maybe people don't have as many answers as they really do, but they have so many answers. And so really successful leaders are able to tap into the knowledge of everybody and bring out that genius. And so they are able to really empower people to then go out and use that genius. So Inquiry-based discussion, something we really, really rely on. And just to, if you're going to write one thing down, ask, don't tell in a coaching situation. So next we have uh, a coach's job is to maintain a vision of the future. So there are a few ways that we do this. And, and I thought of, as, as we were putting this together, um, maybe somebody that's thinking to themselves, um, you know, well, what do I do to do that? Like maybe I'm not the CEO of our company and I don't necessarily know uh, what direction the company is headed overall. Maybe I'm just, I'm working with my team and I want to help them improve, but I don't know what the future looks like. That's kind of a big, uh, you know, it's a big thing for a lot of, it, 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 absolutely, totally get it. And so what I mean by this, what we mean by this is really that uh, it's the coach's job to see the future for each person that they're that that they're supporting and one of the ways that we can cultivate that for ourselves because the coach is once again influencing we are transferring belief which we're going to talk about in a second is uh we have to maintain our own growth mindset so something that we have to practice over and over is our own ability and understanding that we can grow and change and learn so um and we have to practice that too so it's, that's why this is kind of a big, it's sometimes if there's one person over here in a pocket, that pocket will get it, but maybe the next pocket over, they don't 
always get it. It's, it's got to be, it, it becomes really powerful when it's culturally spread. Um, but we also need to develop our knowledge and our expertise in relevant areas to what we're coaching on. And, you know, if we're, you know, let's say there's a lot of coaches out there, I think they're, uh, you know, that's really what a lot of people think of when they think of coaching is like a life coach. And maybe a life coach knows that they need to practice psychology and help people understand what, like sh how to set really good goals and um, understand productivity tips and things like that. Um, but in our, in a work setting, uh, we need to be able to coach people on uh, maybe sometimes the skills that are needed for a specific role. So if we're in a sales management role, we typically know what the business development representative needs to do to succeed. And we can continually practice that stuff and get better at it so that when a new person that comes in and joins our organization is struggling and they, you know, we'll, we can help them a little bit better because that's what the coach does. They practice their, they, they improve their knowledge, their depth of knowledge so that they can apply it to more situations. And finally, and this is perhaps the most important one, uh, and we'll talk about why that is at the end of the presentation, but deepening our understanding of the people that we work with. And that is so, so vital because people who can tell that you are engaged will engage back. And if there is something blocking that engagement, it is typically uh, them feeling like it isn't okay to do so or that somebody, it, it, they don't need to, or it isn't valued. And so if you're valuing it and you're taking the time to make it a purposeful time as a coach, chances are they're going to reflect that right back to you. So, I mean, you're, and, and so I'm just coming back here. So we're, we're ultimately, when we're saying you need to maintain a vision of the future, what your job is, is to help somebody get from where they are to where they want to be and to do that faster than they could do it on their own. That's really what the power of what coaching does. So maintaining a vision of the future. Next, it's great to have a vision for the future, but what are you going to do about it? So coaching is about helping a participant choose their next aligned action. So, uh, Next aligned action, I guess, what do we mean by that? So let's, let's, let's first put a uh, picture in your head. You're in the room with a World Cup football team. It's halftime of the semifinal matchup and the team is losing. What does their coach say? They certainly aren't going to say, it's okay. Everything's fine. You don't need to win. It's all good. We can just be second place or third place or fourth place. It's not a big deal. No, that's not what the coach is going to be saying. Coach's job is to push. Coaches are, that is the entire purpose of what we do. We push people to make progress. So when we talk about next aligned action, hopefully as part of the, the, the process of, of coaching, we maybe we're using some of that expertise that we have, or maybe we just have worked with the person and asked them what direction would they like to go. But we are able to then say, what are you going to do to go towards that thing? And whether they came up with the idea, we should always, as the coach, keep that idea in our mind, what direction they're headed, because then we can help them choose an action that is aligned towards that goal. We're always helping somebody go towards something, towards more happiness, towards more success, towards more knowledge and mastery in an area, towards more contribution to our company whatever it might be. We know that we are driving somebody from one place to another. We are not there to keep somebody comfortable. We are there to push them. We are there to challenge them to be the best version of themselves. We are there to challenge them to get better. We are there to support them, support, support centric process. And that doesn't always look like being, uh, you know, it's, we're not going to placate them. We're going to help them move towards what they want. And we're going to always do it from a supportive vein. We're going to say, you wanted this. You told me that you wanted this. What are you going to do about it? And they might tell you, well, I don't want that anymore. And then we'll say, okay, well, then what do you want? And start over. The object is always to push. And ultimately, through that process of being, of being there and speaking about these things, you're going to generate accountability. And as the coach, you really need to go and make sure that people are accountable to things. And that's why we designed our software platform to support coaches in 
helping to uh, maintain accountability. We've, we've got a whole module in there for goals. We've got a whole module in there. We help people uh, go in and do the, during their weekly check-in, these are the things that we're going to talk about every time. We're going to collect data. We're going to get into this information and we're going to find out stuff and we're going to make progress. So that is something that we really care about is that accountability. It's very important. It's going to, it's going to happen naturally as you are diligent about follow-up. Um, and if things are going well, great. We celebrate the crap out of those. And when things aren't going well, we really have to make sure that we're getting to the bottom of what's going wrong. And just to sum this up, coaching is about action. It's about taking those actions. It's about accountability and, and you know, being there to support somebody. Accountability is really support. And ultimately, the goal is to make progress. So finally, coaching, uh, a great coach practices their process. And great coaching doesn't happen by accident. It happens with a lot of intention and a lot of practice and a lot of skill. Like I said, this is something that anybody can learn, but unless you know what to do in a lot of situations, you're not going to do it well. You might end up falling into one of the many traps that we've discussed, giving somebody the answer, telling them that it's okay on the, when, they're, when they're almost to the victory, but they haven't quite got there yet, instead of challenging them. Um, many pitfalls that can happen. Um, and the way to avoid these is really with a framework, a, a strategy, a, a, a system that you can use and a, and a practice that you have, a process um, that really can help you be successful as a coach. And so this is another thing that we always are, are doing with our customers is saying uh, you need a framework to go off of. And we have some that we plug and play into a lot of organizations that are customizable based on what the organization wants. And we know that um, if we're focused on uh, one of the ways that we do this is we really help the organization focus on what they want to see more of. So we focus on these outcomes. We're thinking about how do we design a coaching program? How do we get prompt people to be better coaches? And what kind of outcomes does the team want? Because that's what, once again, we have to keep that in mind. What direction are we going? We have to, we have to figure out if we don't know our destination, how are we going to get there? So we have to do that work of deciding where are we going? And then we're going to measure ourselves against that. We're going to calibrate our accountability accordingly. And so the last thing, and I said that I was going to talk about this a little bit more uh, previously, is that it doesn't always matter if you have the best question every time engagement with the other person and commitment to the process, commitment to showing up to support them is going to get them to open up more, to be more vulnerable, and therefore to be more willing to accept and to come to realizations that will help them grow. You have to create that space for vulnerability or else you're not going to get people to grow really truly. And if they do grow, it'll be out of fear and not out of joy and hey, we're actually excited to work on this together. Guess which one of those works better if you're in a secure place? I'll let you think about that. Number one coaching myth that really bogs a lot of people down is that the person who is the coach needs to have been there and done that before. If you want that, find a mentor. A mentor is different from a coach. A mentor is saying, this is what I did. And this is how it worked out for me. If you want to replicate that, you could do exactly what I did. That's what a mentor does. A coach is saying, what do you think you should do? They're trying to help you get where you want to go. And maybe they have a little bit of knowledge that they can reflect off of and use. But you do coaching is not about providing all the answers. It's about helping somebody else discover the answers for themselves. So that's very powerful. And the way that you do that is through an outstanding process that repeatedly and demonstrably helps people learn and grow. So that's what you need is a process. And so you can craft that. There are so many different ones. There's some brilliant people that have created them. Um, you know, use ours if you like. We have we are really proud of ours uh, and it's really coachable. And we are, you know, it's it's being used by hundreds of people today. So we also have an exercise for you, as we always like to do, is share some uh, something that you can take back to your team. And so and this is something that we do a lot as well. 
we want you to think of three challenging situations that are relevant to the people that you're managing right now. And if you're not managing anybody and you're reading this because you're interested or watching this because you're interested, think about three challenges that are relevant to you right now. Now I want you to think of three questions that might help somebody in those situ in that situation gain insight and understanding as to how they might resolve it. Maybe there's something going on. You might want to ask them, hey, have you thought about this? Or what if what if we scrap that and what if what if you completely flip the thinking on its head? And finally, think of three questions for each situation that you might ask to help them plan their next move. We call these reflection questions versus action questions. Typically, we're going to want a balance of them or even leaning a little bit more towards action questions, because like we said, it's all about progress. But in order to make really good, well-informed progress, we need to give help make sure the other person uh, has a good level of understanding to make sure that they can take intentional aligned action. So we hope this is helpful for you. Uh, enjoy this exercise and give it to the people that are on your team. This is such an easy one. And it's such a powerful one because it gets you into the coaching mindset of asking questions, of helping somebody grow, helping somebody understand. So uh, we hope that this is a great one for you. And we want to thank you for being here and watching this. Uh, we will be back next week with another one, uh, as we will be for the next week after that and the next week after that. We really uh, are hopeful that this information can be used to create a different environment in your workplace um, or your organization, whatever it might be, uh, because we really believe that this is a better way of operating for uh, any organization that wants to make something meaningful and to have a great team dynamic and to have a uh, to be a place that is creating an amazing impact in the world and also doing it with with joy and fulfillment. So. Uh, we've seen incredible results from all this, and we are uh, very uh, excited to say that our tools are continuing to gain popularity. So if there's anything that we can help you with, if you're thinking about doing employee development, if you're thinking about how can my team become better coach, uh, we, we really value this stuff, but we aren't 100% sure how to operationalize it, or maybe we have something in place and we just are wanting to make sure that it's up to, up to snuff, up to best practice, get in touch with us. We are so, so excited to meet with you. Get in touch with us. We're really, really excited to support you. And we're very, very grateful for your time. And thank you for watching this video. We will be back next week. So see you then.